Hello folks, I'm out in the man cave today. This is going to be a little bit of a different video. Um, I, I think a lot of you know that, that I'm into music as well uh, as, as working on cars, but uh, I had a little bit of a problem with my, my recording uh, hardware. Uh, the uh, audio interface that I was using for years and years died and I had to get something different and I'm going to explain a little bit to you about what I did and, and what it's like and and how it works it's a the new one I got it's a uh, a Focusrite Scarlet 4i4 and uh, I'll run you through a little bit of the paces there's plenty of of reviews on this thing online but uh, there's some things that they don't really touch on like uh different types of software and, and little glitches that you might find with it that I ran across and, and I'll explain those and uh, and tell you a little bit about it. As you can see today, I'm wearing a jacket and the uh, temperature up here says it's around 40 degrees, pretty chilly. So uh, I'm gonna run through this real quick and make a short video about this and uh, the differences and uh, I'll bring you along for the ride. Okay, what I've got here is uh, I've got the uh, Phonic Firefly that I used to use. It's a Phonic Firefly 302 Plus. It was a Firewire interface and it was very fast and, and worked very well until it didn't. <laughs> so I had to go and buy something else. I picked this one up, the Focusrite Scarlet. 4i4 and uh, I'll bring you up a little closer and show you each one of these and uh, show you a little bit of a problems that I had with it installing it and uh, just to let you know nobody paid anything for this review as far as focus right sending me something I'm not that important but uh, uh, matter of fact I uh, looked and looked and looked online and the 200 plus dollar price tag on these things I just couldn't stomach. I happened to go to the same pawn shop that I found the sander at in one of the previous videos and they had this sitting there and uh, I was a little leery of buying something like this at a pawn shop but I took a chance and uh, negotiated it down to fifty dollars uh, with the guarantee that if it didn't power up or something like that or didn't work they could bring it back within 30 days and they were good with that so i managed to pick up a 200 and i think it's 268 dollars is what they go for online this is the third gen not the fourth gen uh and when i got it home plugged it in powered up no problem um then came the issue of uh i, I really don't have good internet out here but I was able to hotspot my, my cell phone that I'm using now for the video uh, and was able to get enough internet on this thing to um, actually download the drivers from Focusrite. Once I got everything registered, I registered it. And, and once I registered it, I was able to uh, download all the drivers and, and uh, even software to uh, record with, which... Uh, it's nice software. It's going to take me a little learning curve to get used to it, but uh, I'm, I'm an old fart, so uh, I'll bring you in a little closer and show you what this thing is and uh, talk a little bit about the problems I had. Okay, first of all, like I said, this is the unit that I was using. Phonic Firefly 302. The biggest problem with this one is, for one, it's Firewire, which Actually, it's not a problem. It's actually very good because it was very fast. But uh, this particular unit um, requires uh, no, no newer than Windows XP. So I have a whole host of computers down here that I've worked on to uh, get a Windows XP computer that worked. This one also here is also XP. I use it 
for DJ in here my man cave uh, with music match it works best on XP but uh, that's what what I use XP for right? and like I say I was using it for recording as well uh, but one day for some reason it the computers wouldn't recognize it anymore the unit would power up the uh, I, could, I changed out the cards in the computer I just couldn't get any computer to work with it anymore so I just figured that something zapped it I don't know what but uh, anyway it stopped working so this is the unit that I just bought at the pawn shop as you can see it's got a microphone plugged up to it not what you're hearing right now but uh, you can see the little light flashing um, and the microphone that I use is a uh, here you go, Audio Technica, it's the AT2020. Uh, that's what I use to record vocals with and guitar and things like that. Uh, my pop filter. Um, but the problem that I had with this, now this has got four, uh, four inputs, four outputs. It's got two inputs on the front and it's got two inputs on the back and four outputs on the back. The uh, knobs here are, are to control the gain to turn it up like if I turn this up all the way you see it start flashing red because the microphone is, is too hot now so but uh, keeping it about right there is usually pretty satisfactory for all of the software it's got a big knob here that I really don't need because this controls nothing but the monitors that goes to the back I don't use that at all I use headphones so the only thing I don't like about this thing, this setup, is that the uh, knob here is so close, this knob here to control the volume in the headphones is so close to the big knob here that it, it makes it a little difficult to get to sometimes, but with my big fat fingers. But uh, uh, anyway, the uh, problem that I've had with this, like I said, this unit here was very fast. I never had any problems with latency at all. Uh, latency meaning... Um, where you're like, I, I, I record a lot to, uh, to karaoke. I like to record my vocals to the karaoke. So, uh, it would record, I don't know, a couple of milliseconds, I guess, uh, behind where I was actually singing. So you go and play it back and, and all the timing is off. Uh, I, I had this problem with, with, uh, this program, which is, Cool Edit Pro. I don't know if you recognize this at all, but it's Cool Edit Pro. Um, and I had to change the latency to a plus 50 um, in order to get everything to line up correctly whenever you record. Um, that worked out fine. I also record sometimes in Audacity. Close this out. Uh, and in, in Audacity, the latency compensation turned out to be negative 225, and uh, that seemed to work out perfect. So, the I think it comes standard with a, a 120, and then basically add another 95 to to that figure. And like I say, this one is a negative figure, whereas on Cool Edit Pro, it's a positive figure. Or just a figure. I tried putting the negative figures in and it didn't help it at all. But um, that's the way it works in Audacity. And uh, it worked out pretty nice. This one here was, what was I recording here? Midnight in Montgomery by Alan Jackson. <coughs> Excuse me. But, so just to let you know, if you do get a Focusrite 4i4, and I think it's probably going to be the same with, with all of the four, or all the focus rights, uh, the, there is a, a certain amount of latency involved. Um, and it's not really the fault of a focus right. It's just the, the matter of of uh, the slower USB versus the FireWire. FireWire typically doesn't have that issue. I don't think. At least mine didn't. But uh, that's that's where I stand with this. As far as the preamps in this thing goes. I got to tell you, they sound a heck of a lot better than this one did. Uh, of course, this one was probably sold and 
designed and sold uh, around 2002, 2004, something like that. Uh, and this is uh, this is third gen. This is uh, actually still being sold in the stores. They have a now they have a fourth gen out of the Scarlet 4i4 uh, that you can purchase. Um, also, I think in the 200. In the 60 maybe $300 range but uh, this also has a loop back function I haven't figured out how to do yet but supposedly you're supposed to be able to uh, take a uh, audio source from somewhere inside your computer maybe YouTube videos or something like that and put it through to the recording DAW software so I haven't quite figured that one out yet that would be really cool if I could do that because that means I could record both the uh, the karaoke music and the vocals at the same time. That's the way I used to do it. Uh, back in the old days, I used to record straight CD with a CD with CD burner, uh, standalone CD burner, and uh, it was in a mixer and all this kind of stuff. And uh, because of that, I've got stacks and stacks of CDs that uh, that have been recorded. But uh, the new technology is the way to go. It, it makes it a lot easier. There is a learning curve involved with using these softwares to uh, do everything in. You, you, can't, you can't just plug in a effects unit like this one over here is what I used to use before. It's an Alesis Nanoverb. Um, I still keep it around because I'm thinking that someday I might still be able to use it in some way, shape, or form, but uh, for right now, it just kind of sits there gathering dust. But, uh, and uh, my mixer, I'm not sure where I've got it, but it's all apart. Uh, all of the knobs on it and, and, and faders and stuff got all scratchy, so I've, I'm working on cleaning it up and putting it back together. Uh, that, that would make it a little easier to record guitars and stuff like this. I mean, you can do it in this. I haven't actually tried to plug a guitar into this, but uh, hopefully someday soon I will. But anyway, just in case you were looking to get one of these and, and was wondering about any kind of glitches or, or problems that you may have, the only problem that I've had with it was the latency. And it is repairable. Now, um, that being said, uh, I close out of this the actual um, where is it here it is the uh, focus right also comes when you log on and, and and register your product it comes with Ableton live light 2 or I one one 11 I guess um, and I have to say that while the software is a little, eh, it's it's got a huge learning curve for me. It's nowhere near as easy as Audacity or Cool Edit Pro. But uh, I've been watching some YouTube videos on online, and uh, it looks like it could be quite a interesting bundle of software because you can also take and make electronic type music by using plugins that are available online and putting it in there and you can put piano drums guitar all this kind of stuff in there to make your own music and uh if you have a uh, midi um a midi board to control your midi stuff with it makes it even easier but you can use the keyboards um to control midi it just like i said it's all a, a big learning curve especially for an old fart like me but uh, this software comes with the Focusrite. You can, it, you, go, you can go to download it, and then you have to go to the Ableton. Well, you, you go to download it, and uh, Focusrite gives you a code. And then you go to um, Ableton and download it and register it with that code. And uh, it's, it's a fully free software. Okay, well, like I said, the, the Ableton is is, uh, is a free software that you can get once you register your uh, Focusrite Scarlet 4i4. Um, and it, there's also a whole host of other 
uh, musical softwares available that I haven't even tapped into yet that is also free that comes with it. Uh, and yes, when you register it as the owner, even, even if, apparently, even if it's been registered before uh, to someone else, once you register it, you get the same uh, software packages that is available to, to a new buyer. So that's, that's great. I was a little worried about that. I was wor worried about getting drivers. I was worried about the software, whether or not the software would work. The uh, Ableton does not have the problem uh, with the latency that the other two pieces of software, the Cool Edit Pro and Audacity. And I think I even tried it in Cubase uh, and it seemed to have the same issue. But uh, the Cubase is a little bit of a quirky software in my opinion anyway. Um, not bad, but just a little different, uh, especially for an old fart like me. But uh, anyway, that was just, uh, I just wanted to do a quick, let you know about what this thing is all about. And, and if anybody had any, uh, you know, a beginner or something that has any, any issues with, with buying some of this newer hardware, and the software that, that the only thing that I've found so far that I don't like is it didn't like was the, was the uh, the latency problem and I've got that figured out so now we're good to go uh, and I have to tell you it sounds head over heels better than than this one did this one uh, it had problems with uh, I would sound like I was in a box or something um, it could be EQ'd out uh, which is okay, I guess, but it's just another step you have to go through. If you if you record something with good uh, microphone preamps in it, then then uh, you typically get a lot better recording and don't have to do as much on the EQ side. As a matter of fact, the only thing this one has it has an air uh, setting that actually uh, kind of does a little bit of EQ setting on its own. Um, it basically raises the high end uh, about 30 dB, I guess it was, it was and uh, it makes it sound airy, just airy, I guess. It brings, it focuses more on the highs, but, uh, and that was a nice, it, it sounds good. I mean, in my opinion, anyway, uh, maybe because I'm partially deaf that uh, the um, bringing up the highs is where, my most of my hearing loss is is in the high range uh and and it, it just sounded better to me to somebody else it might not sound as good but from what i understand from a guy named julian kraus he does reviews on 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 these uh types of uh, audio interfaces and uh, the focus right is typically very flat without the air uh setting very flat all the way across the board from 20 to 20,000 hertz, which is the range of hearing. So, uh, it, it's a good unit. Uh, I looked at this one and then uh, looked at also the uh, the Behringer 4, 4N unit. Uh, I, I like Behringer. They make good stuff, but there was some pretty bad reviews. Uh, I don't know. That can happen anytime. But anyway, uh, for now, that's that's. I'm going to sign off and, and uh, like I said, if you have any questions about this, this unit, I'll try to answer them. I'm not real, I'm not an expert, but uh, uh, they can be found cheaper than what you pay for them new if you just look around. Uh, sometimes even Facebook Marketplace has them. Uh, somebody sell them one, but you know, just be careful. Uh, but that's all I got for now on it, and uh, I thank you for coming along for the ride. If you like this kind of content, then let me know, and I'll, I'll try to put some more in, and maybe we can talk about software and stuff like this and and uh, other music things. I, I, I'd love to talk about that kind of stuff, too. Some folks, even on my car videos, have asked about my music on there, and uh, that's, this is how I do it. But, uh, again, thanks for coming along for the ride.